Uh, so John Bensich, um, Chief Executive Officer here at Achieve Life Sciences. And I've been uh, in the life sciences space for like north of 15 years now at this stage. I'm a CPA, MBA by background, so not a, a PhD, MD or anything like that, but I've gotten kind of a, a mini uh, a version of both of those over the last uh, couple of decades working in this uh, this industry, but I've seen everything from you know early stage preclinical assets uh, all the way through the launch of a diagnostic product uh, and everything in between. Uh, but this product that we're working on here, Cytosinoclean, you know, we think probably has more potential than at least anything I've had an opportunity to work on uh, historically. Um, so I came to Achieve Life Sciences in 2017. Uh, up until that stage, uh, this was a, a company being run by its co-founders. Uh, they had identified this drug nearly a decade ago. Um, this drug has been used in Eastern Europe. It's been on the market uh, for over 20 years, uh, been uh, used in over 20 million patients during that time frame. But it was a drug that was never available uh, in Western Europe or the U.S., and that was the opportunity that we identified, which was to effectively bring this drug out of obscurity uh, and first and foremost bring it to the U.S. and then ultimately to the rest of the world. Um, so we were able to get global rights and supply uh, to the agent, um, and we've been, uh, since that time, really focused on uh, the development path and bringing it forward to the market here in the U.S., uh, early on, we forged a partnership with the NIH, uh, who deemed this a drug of national public health importance, uh, which is nice words, but uh, they actually stepped up uh, and funded uh, north of $5 million to help update the non-clinical package, which allowed us to open up an IND here in the U.S. Uh, and then more recently, uh, on our uh, ORCA V1 trial, um, they helped fund that study as well. So they've been great partners along the way. Um, but the challenge with this agent has been, you know, really the the history of it and the fact that most of the development work was done two or three decades ago, uh, and that work was not done uh, to standards that would, uh, you know, basically uh, satisfy the, the regulators today. So we've been effectively recreating the full development package to, to bring this ahead. And, and to date, we've ran a, a phase two trial in smoking cessation, uh, one of two phase three trials in in uh, phase three trials, uh, pivotal trials for smoking cessation, and just last week announced uh, the first ever trial reading out in nicotine e-cigarette cessation, which was a success as well. So um, very excited about the data that's been generated so far and, and ultimately moving this drug forward to market in the near future. So uh, the mechanism of, of cytosinicline is uh, is pretty distinct. So it's a partial agonist antagonist to the nicotine receptors in the brain. So in one sense, it comes in and it blocks the receptors. So if you continue to smoke while using the product, uh, you don't get the same pleasure and satisfaction that you normally would. Um, but it does partially stimulate the, the receptors. So it's nicotine-like, but albeit at much lower levels. Uh, and that helps with the cravings and withdrawal symptoms as you're making a, a quit attempt. Um, so, you know, we think this is the right approach. This is a, a validated target. Uh, in fact, Pfizer developed Chantix or Varenicline uh, after our agent. Um, and when they created that molecule, they created uh, with Chantix a product that hits other targets outside of the nicotine receptors. Um, and in particular, they hit a, a receptor called 5-HT3, um, which is known to induce nausea and vomiting, uh, which is why with Chantix, you see high rates uh, of just that. So it's about a 28% rate of nausea you see with that agent, um, as well as a number of other uh, effects that are in the double digits. And for us, in this indication in particular, we think tolerability is really a key differentiator. Um, and what we've seen so far uh, in our smoking cessation development program is single digit rates of adverse events. So a really, really clean safety profile. Um, and for what is essentially a consumer indication, we think this is really important. You know, if we were in oncology where people are willing to put themselves through just about anything to survive, um, that would be different. But in this setting, if you feel terrible on the medication, it just makes it that much easier to give up uh, and go back to, to your cigarettes. 
Um, so we think we've got a real key differentiation in, in what we're seeing on the tolerability side that's that's driven in large part by the MOA. The, in terms of, of where we see the key differentiation with this agent, um, first and foremost is tolerability. So again, we've been seeing single digit rates of adverse events in the, the smoking cessation indication. Um, on efficacy, you know, it's always difficult to compare uh, across trials, but from an odds ratio perspective, um, we look to have best in class efficacy. Um, the, the standard of care, or the agents available today have odds ratios between two and three. Uh, what we've seen in our or ORCA program is odds ratios between five and eight, um, which is really unprecedented in this category. Uh, we've also validated a shorter course of therapy. So the agents available today are 12 weeks or longer. Uh, in our phase three program, we have validated uh, both six and 12 weeks. So at six weeks, that would be half the duration of what's available today. Uh, and we think from a, a smoker's perspective, you know, having a shorter course option where you don't have that long-term commitment uh, could be a real advantage. Um, and then the final uh, piece that really differentiates us uh, is the fact that we are naturally derived uh, and we continue to hear from patients as well as subjects in our trials uh, that that's an attractive element uh, to the product as well. So on uh, the e-cigarette side, you know, I think we were really fortunate fortunate enough to partner with the NIH. Uh, we got a two and a half million dollar grant to help fuel the ORCA V1 trial, uh, and this uh, is the first ever trial to read out uh, for a therapeutic and nicotine e-cigarette cessation. Um, and this is a category that's you know grown leaps and bounds over the last decade. Um, you know, it, we've got 31 million smokers in the U.S. Um, there's now 9 million e-cigarette users, so um, really a, a huge uh, category that, especially in the youth, has been a real uh, pandemic as of late with the advent of Juul and some of these other products and the, the flavors that are very attractive to the younger generation. Um, but this is also a category that doesn't have any approved medications, um, so there is nothing available to treat nicotine e-cigarette cessation um, and given that all of the smoking cessation products on the market today are all generic, no one's looking into this. Um, so we see this as a real uh, opportunity for, uh, for Achieve Life Sciences to not just be an aid to smoking cessation, but a treatment for nicotine addiction more broadly, uh, which would really set us apart on the market. So the, the ORCA V1 trial was really a proof of concept study. So we've have an extensive history in, in studying smoking cessation, but this was the first time ever outside of that setting. Um, so it was really to validate whether or not um, we could see activity in other forms of nicotine addiction. Um, and given the, the MOA, we should have applicability really across any form, um, whether it's smoking, vaping, chewing tobacco, snooze, kind of you name it. It just so happens this is the next largest category that made sense to, to go into. Um, so we enrolled 160 nicotine cigarette users. Um, we had two to one randomization in favor of the uh, the active. And what we found uh, was uh, during the last four weeks of therapy, and we treated for 12 weeks, uh, we saw a biochemically confirmed abstinence rate of uh, around 31% for active and 15% for placebo. Um, and that was an odds ratio of 2.6. Um, and even with such a small study, um, that ended up being statistically significant. So um, very happy uh, that we're able to show activity there. Um, and, and importantly, you know, we didn't see anything new in terms of the, the very favorable tolerability profile. Um, and something that we've been seeing more recently in the smoking cessation side is we actually saw higher rates of nausea and headache on the placebo arm compared to what we saw on active, you know, and that uh, both happened to be withdrawal symptoms. And again, we were getting more patients to quit on active. So there's some kind of palliative effect there that uh, is, is advantageous. So I think all in all, very happy with what we've seen here. And it really gives us an opportunity to think through, you know, how we will move this forward in the clinic um, in collaboration with the FDA to, to get this expanded indication. Um, in 
in terms of next steps, so uh, data on our second phase three trial right around the corner. Um, with that, you know, we'll be working on a, a new drug application with the FDA, um, which we'd anticipate to be filed uh, first half of next year. Um, and then it's really in the FDA's hands in terms of that review cycle before uh, making this available uh, to the public at large. But, um, you know, we've been at this for the better part of five years and really coming down the home stretch of making this available. And, you know, we really believe in what we have here. This continues to be a you know, global epidemic over a billion smokers around the world. And, you know, nothing new has been brought to market in nearly two decades. You know, Chantix was the last approved medication in 2006. Um, that's had a really checkered history with a boxed warning for suicidal ideations and withdrawn from the market for having potential carcinogens. Um, just about a year and a half ago. Um, so there really needs to be new innovation here. This is a problem that's not gone away, and we think we've got a real solution to help.